Milt Wagner, the legend, the living All legend, right. man. Appreciate you taking a little bit of time out of your day to come through the podcast, brother, man. Good to see uh, you. You too, my man. Anything for you, my man. No problem. Already, already, <laughs> already. You know, first thing we always talk about on the podcast before we get to the basketball, we talk about bourbon and going to school in Kentucky and Louisville. Did you ever get to try any bourbons or was it one that you might have liked? Well, when I was when I was in school, I didn't really get to try. But when I moved back to Louisville, Wolford was the one that I I would would like I liked the most actually out of, out of all the bourbons. I think Wolford is pretty smooth, man. So that became the bourbon I would drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Wolford will definitely get you together, man. It, it'll definitely get yeah. you where you need to be. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> now come now coming out of Camden High School, you were a McDonald's All American. You won a national championship probably had your pick of the litter of schools that you could have went to. What made you choose to attend the University of Louisville? Well, actually, back then, I used to watch University of Louisville because, you know, back then, a lot of teams didn't come on TV. You know, we, only, we didn't have ESPN. All we had was CBS and NBC. And University of Louisville came on TV every now and then. So I got to watch them on TV. Then I knew about Griff. You know, Griff was big time back then, man. So... I, I started watching them, man, being from New Jersey, and I liked that they style, too. They like going up and down. That's how we played in high school. And then they had this one, the national championship, too, in 80. So, you know, that was, that was like my, my junior year, I think. And so I got to follow them from there, man, and I was like, hey, I put them on my radar after that. And then, you know, they started recruiting me. Coach Wade Houston started recruiting me, man, and, you know, he, he was a – he was a mainstay up in Camden, boy. He came in there and, you know, he showed how much they really wanted me at the University of Louisville, man, and, and it all worked out. Great guy. Now, were you really the first person from that area to establish that connection from Jersey yeah. to Louisville? Absolutely. Yeah, I was the first, then Billy Thompson, and then Kevin Walls. Then after that, Nate Johnson came later on down the line. Nate. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> right. Big buckets. Big buckets. Now, in 1986, you hit two clutch free throws to secure the championship for the Metro Conference Tournament. And you got the nickname Iceman. But did the nickname Iceman come from that moment or did it come from another moment and it just so happened to blow up after that? Or were you known for it beforehand? Well, actually, it came that, – that, the name came up on me in high school. You know, George Gervin – who people, you youngsters might not know who that is, but he was the original Ice Man. <laughs> right. Know? And you know, I, I used to love how he played, man. He was smooth, and everybody said my game was similar to his. You know, we both was long and lanky and, you know, things like that. So they started calling me Ice Man in, uh, in high school, actually. So, and, and then even after games, it seemed like I never sweat. You know, I might have 30, 40 points, but my jersey be dry. So, so they started calling me Iceman in high school, and it kind of stuck from there. And when I got to the University of Louisville, that was my name, and I pretty much just kind of kind of made it my, my domain to make free throws at the end of the game. So Ice just kind of stuck with me after that. Right, 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 right. <laughs> That's dope. Uh, Mel, what made the 86 team so special? Because I know you guys won. What made it so special? Well, actually, for me, it was special because that was actually my second senior season because I, I broke my foot in my first senior season in 85, you know, the second game of the season. And uh, I, wasn't, I was hesitant about coming back. I was going to try to just put myself in the draft at the end of the year. But, you know, I had a screw in my foot, and my foot got affected, so that kind of set me back. And so I decided to come back that next year, and the reason was because I knew what – what we had coming back from the previous year with Billy Thompson, Jeff Hall, Herb Crook, and them guys. And then and then uh, we had the recruiting class with Purvis Ellison coming in, Kevin Walls, Tony Kimbrough, Kenny Payne, all them guys. I knew we had a chance to win a national championship because I had went to the Final Four two times before that year. So I figured I wanted to come back and win me a national championship, so I came back. And, it, and that, that's what made it so special. Because it wasn't just me coming back. I was coming back to right. win a national championship, and it worked out perfectly. Right. Now, what was Purvis right. like? Because a lot of people didn't really get to see his personality. They, they know him from being the great player and 
helped lead us to a national championship. But what was he like as a person? Because, you know, he seemed really reserved and quiet and, and didn't really show much to his personality. Yeah, he was. I mean, on the court, man, Curb, Curb just go out there and take care of business, man. Don't say much. Didn't show a lot of emotion. But he always went out there and got the, jo the job done. But off the court, he was a jokester, so, jokester now. So don't, don't get it twisted on that one. Now. <laughs> Herb, Herb was pretty, he was a pretty funny guy, man. But like you said, man, it seemed like never really bothered them. You know, that's why he got that name, Never Nervous Purvis. So because he just went out there and did his job as a freshman, man. He played well beyond his years. Now, after finishing up your wonderful All-American career at the University of Louisville, you were drafted to the NBA. You played 13 years professionally. But one of the highlights of your professional career was winning the national, I mean, was winning the world championship with the Los Angeles Lakers. Right. Talk about that experience and how competing with Magic and, and such Hall of Famers each and every day, you know, talk about that experience and what it meant to you to win that national championship, but just to be around that kind of caliber of guys. I mean, it was great, man, because even growing up, I always, Lakers was always one of my best teams. And I used to tell all my friends one day, I'm going to play for the Lakers. You know, that was one of, <laughs> as a kid, I always, you know, that's what I always wanted, man. And, and, and right. it happened and the dream came true. Then I got to play with guys like Magic, James Worthy, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Brian Scott, play against them Hall of Famers, being with them guys like every day, competing with them every day, and just watching their greatness, man, just, you know, in practice and in games was was unbelievable experience for me, man. I mean, we was like rock stars. Everywhere we went, we had a barricade of people, man, you know, following us from the game to the hotel. The hotel was full. Hotel lobby was full of people. It, it, it was unbelievable, man. Unbelievable experience. Ooh, hey, I can only imagine. Ooh, that, that, was, that was like, you know, the big concert coming into town, the Lakers coming oh, yeah. into town, sell out, everything sold out, businesses sold out, the arena Absolutely. sold out. Right. Ooh, I, can't even, I can't even imagine what it was like yeah. for you boys when y'all traveling, man. True rock stars for real. Yeah, yeah, because back then you didn't, you didn't, you, we stayed overnight back then. Now they got these private planes. We, 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 we flew commercial. We had the first class seats, but still we flew with everybody else back then. So you, had, you, so you, so you had two right. nights to be rock stars. You had the night oh, before absolutely. the game and the night after the game. <laughs> right, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, once, once you retired, you went and joined Coach Calipari down in Memphis. Now, was that something that was always in the works, or did Calipari sort of approach you? Because your son was the number one player in high school at the time when you retired. Now, was that right. sort of a coincidence that you retired around that time and that you went to coach with Kyle? Did he use that sort of as a recruit mechanism? Or how did that process sort of play out with you getting into coaching? Well, actually, before my son even blew, blew up, blew up. I, I met Cal a while ago, man. We used to go to five-star camps and work. I used to be a counselor there. He used to work there. And that's how we first really met. And I always admired him as a coach. And I told him, you know, whenever I retire, I would love to get into coaching if he's still coaching at that time. So he said, no problem. And just happened, I retired. Uh, it was my son's junior year. Coach Cal was with the 76ers at the time, assistant coach. So it was right across the bridge from where I'm from. So, you know, we, we stayed in contact. and. And then once he said he was getting ready to get back into college coaching, he, he let me know. And, he, and I said, well, coach, I'd like to come on your staff, man. He said, okay. You know, when I'm ready to make that move, I'll let you know. And, you know, it worked out. And it just happened my son was the number one player in the country, you know. But, you know, it all worked out. You know, it was there. And, uh, you know, and that's what happened from there, man. I started my career there. Then my son came behind me. Nice. Now, how was it? Uh, what was it like coaching with Coach Cal and coaching your son D Wags? Like, uh, how was that father son relationship in practice where you got to separate being a father yeah. and getting on your son but not doing right. his job in practice? Well, well, first of all, it was great just being able to be there with him because I had my son when I was a sophomore in college, so I was still playing most of his career. You know, even in high school, I never really got to see him play a lot of high school basketball because I was playing overseas at the time. So my, that was my first year when I retired. It was his junior year, and they won everything his junior year. That was my first time I really get to see him play. So for me to be able to, to get him in college and spend a whole year with him just every day, just watching him work, watching him get better, and watching Cal push him because I know 
Kyle was going to push him to be the best he, gonna, he can be. Kyle don't care who you is, what kind of ranking you have, how many points you score. You know, he's going to – he going to push you, and he going to make you the best player you're going to be. And, my, and I thought my son needed that because I didn't think he ever been pushed because he was always better than everybody else, you know. So so it worked out right. Like I said, we went in there thinking it was going to be a two-year two year plan for him, and it wound uh -huh. up being one year because he was playing – Cal had him playing so well at the end of his freshman year. Everybody said he was going on lower than six, number eight in the draft. He wound up going number six. Now, at what point did you realize that – you weren't able to beat your son or was it ever a point that when you guys play one-on-one -on -one, that like he couldn't beat you? Well, it was actually his junior year <laughs> when, I, <laughs> when I retired. You know, he could never beat me. We, were playing, we used to play this game we called two dribbles, you know, because, you know, he, he grew up in the Iverson area where they wanted to take 100 dribbles and then try to cross you over. Right, I said, right. man, I'm too old for that, man. I said, man, <laughs> we, we play two dribbles. You make a move from the top of the key. And so that developed his one-on-one -on -one skills, though, because he had to learn how to use his dribbles wisely, you know, because you only got two dribbles. Right. And I told him you only need one dribble to get to the hole, you know, from the top of the key. And he, he realized that, and that really helped him with his one-on-one -on -one game because he already had one-on-one -on -one game, but he didn't have to use all them dribbles. So finally he beat me his junior year because, you know, I was always right. taller than him, so I used to just block his shot. But by the time his junior year, he figured it out. He figured how to get up on my body. He was stronger. And, man, he beat me because we played best out of five. He beat me He beat me three games straight. And I told him, I said, that's it, man. We ain't playing no more. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you got it now. I said, I'm just going to – we be on the same team now. Because we always played on opposite teams when we played against each other. He always wanted to play against me. I wanted to play against him just to make each other better, you know. So mm. but after that, though, we played together on the same team. So it, it was – nice. Nice. Yeah, he yeah. always now, had that, you know, like that manly frame. Even when he was in high school, yeah. man, like his frame was just different from everybody else. Like he just right. developed before yeah. everybody else, man. Right. Yeah. Right. And he played a grab. People don't realize, man, he was a hell of a football player, man. I mean, he oh, was really? a beast in football. Oh, man, he was a beast. I mean, he. I'm not. I'm being honest. He probably went pro football too. You know, oh. he, he just was one of them natural athletes. Baseball. He was. He was playing fastball when he was eight years old. They was 13 years old, man. And he was smacking it out the park. It, it, it was crazy. I mean, he was a crazy athlete, man. So, yeah. So he had that toughness, man, from football. And he just carried it on to basketball. And like you said, his body was more mature than a regular high school kid, too. So that helped him a lot. Now, uh, was it weird uh, being on Memphis sideline, playing against Louisville for the first time? Was it, was it a weird thing for you? Oh, it was real weird because they built, they booed me actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> really? So when I came in, I heard it was mixed. It was mixed emotions. I heard some booze, some chairs, you know. But I'm like, wow, you know, I'm up in Freedom Hall. This is this is a building I want. You know, we won a championship and for the university, and I'm playing here. I'm on the other opposite team, and that was our rivalry too back then. You know, we didn't even play Kentucky back then, so that Memphis State was our rivalry, and it was. It was, a, it was a funny feeling, man. So, But I knew we had to get that win to come in there. Though. I had to have some bragging rights you know, coming in there. So, But it all worked out. After the game, I got to see a lot of friends. And, you know, it, it was fun, man, just being back in Freedom Hall again. That's, that's crazy that the last time you had been in that series, you was on the other end, but you was hitting game-winning free throws to beat Memphis right. State. And so now you're on the sideline of Memphis State playing against Louisville, man. So exactly. that's interesting. <laughs> it's always oh, yeah. very, very interesting. Even, be, even being in Memphis, it was interesting. People up there were saying, man, we used to hate you, man. <laughs> and, you know, and, I, and you know, I, I be my, I said, I understand. I said, I would hate me too. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Cause, Cause you know, that game, you had to bring it that game against Memphis State. Both teams, you had to bring it. Yes, to play in that game, you had to bring it. So, you know, it was fun, though. It was fun. So tell me about the incident or the time when in 2005 we were playing and you're in a very similar situation that you're familiar with, hitting game-winning right. free throws to win the conference right. championship. Except this time you're on the Memphis sideline and Darius Washington is up there shooting three with no time left to win the championship. What was going through your mind at that time? Because it was a it was a it was a scenario that you were all too familiar with, and now you're right. having to try to coach a young man through that same experience to try right. to be successful. 
Right. Well, what was going through my mind was told him this man, this do you go through your natural routine? Because he was our best free throw shooter. You know, he was shooting 80 some percent from the free throw line. And he was the reason we was at at that situation right there. He brought us back in the game. So he he was rolling. So I was confident, man. I told him, just, you know, go through your natural routine, man. Knock him down. So he got up there, man. And he was confident. You know him. He was confident. Yeah. He went up there, the first one. Uh -huh. So he missed the first one. So, all right, we still okay. Still okay. So he stepped back. And then he went to second one. It was short. Then I was like, oh, then that's when it starts <laughs> sitting in right there. Because you know how it is, man. Mine start oh. playing tricks on you, man. Then Mom you start sweating. going back short, too. The <laughs> follow through wasn't as, 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 as crisp as no, and normal. And then that third one, I said, oh, man, I started crossing my fingers after that one. I said, oh, then he missed that one, man. And and I felt for my man because he just hit the floor, man. I was one of the first ones going to grab him, man, get him off the floor. Because I told him, you ain't had nothing to be ashamed of, man, because we wouldn't be in that situation if you wouldn't have brought us back to, to even have right. a chance to win the game because y'all was beating us, you know. And uh, he brought us back, man. He put us on his back, man, and came down to them free throws, man. So, you know, but it was tough, man. It's tough for any kid, man, to go through that. And we probably would have went, went to the – we had to win that game to get to the tournament, To the too. tournament, yeah. So, so it was a lot at stake, man. But, yeah. Uh, Hey, but you know, any any player, man, you live for that situation, though. You know, any kind right. of player, you want to be put in a situation where you got a chance to win the game, whether it's a, a jump shot or a free throw or assist or just making a play, the right play. You know, it just happened and it worked for him that one at that time. You yeah, know, so. I hate that for him because that's what people remember. You know, he was a I great know. player. And yeah, man, that's, I, I one, think, that's the only thing people remember about him, and I hate that for him, man. And I think it haunted them for a while, too, man. He wound up going overseas and playing, man, but I don't think he was the same player, man, after that for some reason, you know. Because sometimes, you know, you can take it so hard, it can take a lot out of you, you know. Yeah. You got to kind of just let that go and, and just go on. But, you know, some, some guys hold on to it. Some guys hold on to it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was interesting, man, because you guys had a team full of athletes that year. You guys had, you know, Chris Douglas Roberts, you had oh, yeah. Anthony Rice. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Anthony Rice. Burks. Yeah, what's well, the no, big no, Burks redhead, wasn't there big yet. redhead yeah. from Alabama? Uh, yeah, yeah, Dewan Irwin. Yeah, you know? Dewan Irwin, man. Yeah. Oh, man. You guys kept a great group of athletes. And, and the first game we got, first game we played you guys, man, you guys came to Freedom Hall and ran us out by like 20, man. I was like, yeah. we were trying to press you guys, man. Darius Washington was breaking it. He was breaking it. Yeah, yeah we couldn't yeah. press him. I'm like, oh, Yeah, man. yeah. We, and so we had been in a similar scenario early in the year with Kentucky. Oh, We had fouled okay. Patrick Sparks, and we had lost that situation. And so then that was oh. the second time we were, we were like, oh. Man, as soon as Francis not again, him, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was like, oh man, but you know, luckily it, it had worked out. And if I felt right. bad at the time when he missed it, because initially I didn't, because Darius was like you said, right. he didn't lack confidence, and he was going to oh, trash yeah. talk. Yeah. And Absolutely. so he was trash talking, <laughs> and so we up there trash talking while he was shooting. You know, trash right. talking. <laughs> he made the first one, missed the second one, and when he missed the third one. I wanted to talk trash to him, but I felt so bad for him because I seen yeah. him tall. <laughs> yeah, and I, you yeah. know, I knew he was a young kid too, but I knew he was really right. good. And I was like, it, it was tough, yeah. man. It was tough. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it was like tough. Said, that was a great game though, man. Yeah. That was a great game. Yeah. Great and I was game. surprised, man, but you know, you guys had to win four games in four days. And, and that yes. wasn't easy, man. And, and, yes, and, yeah. That was tough, but yeah. great memories though. Great memories. Oh yeah, great So memory. now, now, OG, we reached a part of the podcast we call our Burn Proof segment of Rapid Fire Questions. Gonna shoot okay. you some rapid fire uh, questions. Don't give it a lot of thought. Just give us your first answer. We're gonna roll with it. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. First question The best barbecue place to eat at in Memphis? Mm. I said Big Mama's. Mm. Big Mama's barbecue. All right, I'm gonna have to write that one down. Is that is that is that close to uh what's the what's the street in front of the arena? What the uh it's right nah, this one is out is out east, man, on uh on uh Hirschborn Parkway. All right, big mama. Mm. I'm gonna have to write that yeah. down. Toughest person you ever had to guard? Uh, Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah. MJ. <laughs> right, right. But that was in college because we never played. I mean, that was in, in the pros because we never played him in college. Oh, okay. we never played North Carolina. Well, we oh, did, but okay. he was gone when we played North Carolina. So yeah, where well, MJ was the, he was the toughest man. He, he, it was tough, man. That it was funny too. That game. I had a chance to play because uh, 
Magic got hurt. Michael Cooper got hurt. So I played like 36 minutes that game. And we was at Chicago. So, you know, I'm, I'm doing my thing. I'm trying to go at him. Right. And shoot, he gave me like 36, man. I said, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had a nice 16 though, but you gotta understand, I still had Kareem on my yeah, team. Yeah, you had other people Byron to see. Scott, James <laughs> Worthy, you know. So I couldn't do what he did. I, I didn't get a chance to shoot like him, but man, he dunked on me that game too. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> he, was, yeah. he got me too. Oh, he got me. I thought I could get him too. I sure tried to get it. He got me though. <laughs> yeah, he he was now, the toughest uh, guy for sure. Right. Yeah. What's one thing a person can say? What's one thing a person can say or do that let you know they're from Camden? Uh, I told you to say to, to say that you're from Camden. They gonna let you know from the door. I'm from Camden. <laughs> Before you even start talking, I'm from Camden. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They gonna start Real. the conversation on. Real. I'm from Camden. That's hey. That's how. Yeah. And that's how. And that's how Chicago guys do. They're gonna let you know I'm from Chicago. Yeah. I'm know. from. Yeah. They want you to know I'm, I'm from Camden. I'm real. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you said exactly. Michael, exactly. you said Michael Jordan was the toughest person that you had to guard, but who was the first person to really make you realize that you wasn't in college anymore, that you was in the NBA? Like, man, this dude just busting my ass, man. Like, who was the first person that made you have that realization moment? Like, damn, I'm in the league. Well, shoot, basically it was just in practice with my team. You can understand, I'm guarding Magic, Magic six nine playing a point, man. He he was a power forward playing point guard. And his skill level was ridiculous. And, you know, it was like, I mean, every day it was, it was crazy in our practice. Because like you said, you got all these Hall of Famers all on the court together. And, and I'm, I was a rookie at that time. So, man, this every day in practice going against them guys, that's when I knew. I said, this is real right here. Right. You know, I didn't have to go outside my team, right. you know. I, I knew right on my team when I first day in practice, I said, this is real, you know? So, you know, now I'll say in practice, and after that, after that, that was pretty much, you know, I just, you know, cause like the league, everybody's gonna play. Right. Everybody can play in the league, man. If you in the league, everybody can play. So, but I, I just happened to be with some hall of famers all on one team. So, and got to see Kareem shoot that sky hook every day, man. That was, that was mm. great for me. And you I jumped mean, to the highest level too. <laughs> oh man, I mean it was I mean I mean like our jump shot, that was his jump shot. He could shoot that, he could shoot that from the foul line like a jump shot. Yeah, it's unbelievable, man. I mean, nobody shoots it. Think about it, nobody ever shoots that shot but him. You know, yeah. it's just yeah, but is but this being on my team, that was that was enough knowing I was in the NBA, just being in practice. Now, um it, sh it was showtime. You seen everybody at the game. Now, what's one person you would have loved see seeing sit courtside? You know, see it all. I would have loved see. Well, shoot, I saw them. They was already there. <laughs> right. Shoot. I, I know got that. to see Jack Nicholson or uh, Janet Jackson was my favorite because I got okay. to take a picture with her after the game one time. I was like, wow. I always wanted to meet her before I even got to LA. I said I want to meet Janet Jackson, man, and I just happened to have a chance. He came. To to the back, man, and she went in this private room, said, if you want to take a picture, whatever, you'll come back here. So I went back there, man, and got to meet her, man. She's, she's a real cool person, real cool man, person. That's dope, that's dope. Yeah. Was anybody on the Lakers team messing with Janet? Oh, nah, nah, nah. Nah, okay. <laughs> not, uh, not I know Magic's know trying to slide up in there or not. <laughs> <laughs> not that I know of now, you know. <laughs> Yeah, man. It was all kinds of celebrities around, though, man. It was, it was bet, crazy, man. I bet. Yeah. After a while, it didn't even phase me, man, because it was just natural, you know? It was like, you can see everybody down there. Right. Arsenio Hall, everybody, man. Movie stars. It was, it was crazy. It was crazy. Something that you took away from Denny Crumb that always stuck with you? Well, just you got to work hard for everything you get, you know, because and I, and I tell this story to everybody. My freshman year, I come in as a McDonald's All-American, okay? And in, in preseason, I had back spasms, so I didn't practice much. So, you know, it was guys there that was practicing. So once I started back practicing, you know, I started doing my thing. And, you know, I felt like I was still, you know, should be in a rotation. And the first game, I, I didn't even get in. 
And so I'm sitting back like, this guy you playing in front of me, man, I'm killing him in practice. I'm like, why are you not playing me? And so, you know, I got frustrated. I'm like, man, I'm going somewhere else. I'm, you know, you know, just, I'm a young kid, man, right, I'm going somewhere right. else. And, but, but then after that, I started playing and I understood what he was doing, because basically he gonna make you earn your keep, you know, because guys was practicing, I wasn't practicing. So he said for me to, for him to put me in the, in the lineup right away without even earning my practice, you know, through practice and things like that, you know, I wouldn't appreciate it once I got it. You know, so, and, and, and I understood that. So, you know, once I understood that, I just kept working hard, working hard. And, and you don't want, and I do that even as when I was coaching. I let the kid know you don't want nobody to give you anything. You want to earn everything you got. Because once you get it, you're going to work hard to keep it. You know, because if somebody just give it to you, you right. you just let it go. You know, so, and that's what he right. taught me, man, how to earn earn everything you get, man. And that, that made me the player I was because I wasn't worried after that. Because, you know, some kids, you could be there and they, they recruit another All-American to come in. They feel some kind of way. I, yeah. I used to tell Coach, bring him on in here. <laughs> you know, he's going to be sitting back there watching me play. He, <laughs> right, you know, right. he had to work to his time. But now kids these days, they see that happening. They want to transfer. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah, well, you right. know, so it, it's different now. Kids are different. Entitlement and, and and wanting to be handed things, man. The pampering is right. different, man. The, it's right. not the th the competition yeah. that, that you know the the seeking and the thrill of competition is not where it used to be. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because you know you come in cocky, but still you got to earn. You got to earn everything. Because right. I thought I was better than everybody that was starting in front of me. Because I had Lancaster and, and Jerry E starting. And then he had Greg Doozer coming in. I don't know if you know, remember Greg Doozer. Mm -hmm. He was like they six man coming in, but he was a senior, but he was a veteran. And he knew the system. And he was playing in front of me at first. And that's what I really, I was like, man, I'm killing this guy at practice every day. And Doozer's a great guy, but he was six foot. And I was like, come on now, coach. Right. <laughs> but you know, he knew the system. And he was there all through preseason practice. And I and I didn't understand that at first. But once I started going through it, I understood it. And then I, eventually I took over that spot. And then, you know, everything was good. But I understood what he was doing later on down the line. But at the time, I was like, man, I'm transferring. You know, you right, know like right. any kid, man. I ain't used to this. You know, I'm McDonald's All-American. I'm, I'm trying to come in here and start. So, but I... But the next year, I, just like you said, it prepared me for that next year. I wound up being a leading scorer as a sophomore, you know. And I had Rodney, Scooter McRae, who, uh, Charles Jones, Lancaster Gordon. And I, and I was the leading scorer on that team as a sophomore. So he, it prepared me for the next, the next year. So I went in. It was like I never – I was there the whole time, you know. So, so that, that's, that's what I take from Coach, man. I thank Coach from that, man. He got me right. <laughs> he got me right. Now, I know you said that um, you took a picture with Jen. Could you name somebody else you would stop and ask a picture for? Uh, ask a picture to take with? Yeah. Uh, see, for me, I wasn't that kind of guy, man. I'm not going to lie. I admire you yeah. from afar, but, like, if I, I, I don't even, even like today, I won't say, man, take a picture with me. You know, if I right. saw a celebrity, that's just, that's just my personality. Right. There's no disrespect to none of them. I just... You know, if they say, let's take a picture, I'll take one, but I wouldn't be the one to initiate it. You know, it's just, but you know, I, I love meeting them though, meeting people, but as far as taking pictures right. and stuff, I, I just wasn't ever that kind of guy. But you know, like I said, it's, it's I got my with Janet, that was good enough for me, so I was good. Right, <laughs> I understand that too, because I'm sort of, I'm kind of the same way. I'll ask to take a picture. The only person I would like to get a picture with is probably Obama, but other than that, Obama. I'm kind of yeah, like that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would be a good one. I probably would want one with Obama for sure. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying I would probably be too shy to, to even ask right. for it though. You know, somebody right. had to just say, hey man, y'all take a picture, and then I'll do it like that. And I said, man, send me that picture. But I probably right. wouldn't even ask though. That's just me. You know, I've always been yeah. that way, just laid back, low key. But you know, I admire all them guys though. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. This is a question we call franchise sign and wave. Now, you got to franchise a guy that you're going to build your team around. You right. got to sign a guy that you're going to keep on your team. And you got to uh -huh. wave a guy that you just don't have a roster spot for. Okay. So you got three guys. You got Scottie Pippen, uh -huh. James Worthy, and Kawhi right. Leonard. Uh -huh. Who are you franchising? 
Who you signing? Mm -hmm. Who you waving? Franchise and worthy. I'm signing Kawhi. And I got to wave Scotty. I got to wave Scotty. Even though it's a tough one between yeah, them that's two. Tough. That that I mean, and you probably have mixed emotions on them last two. It can go either way because they both do the same thing. Kawhi might be a better score. Yeah, yeah. You know, Kawhi yeah. might be a better score, but Kawhi can play defense just like Scotty. You know, they both defensively they they're the same, but the the, the edge is I would say the is the offensive. But factor. you think about it too, though. I know it's a different era. You think about when Scotty was without Mike, and, and when right. Kawhi was with Toronto. Right. Think about that, and then he led that team to a championship. You yeah. know, yeah. do you think Scotty's good enough to lead a team to a championship? Better than Kawhi? Ask that question. You know what rubbed me the wrong way about Scotty? When what? Phil drew up the play for for Tony. Oh yeah. And Scotty yeah, said, "I'm yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not going in the game." Right. You don't yeah. do that. Yeah, you don't do that. You don't do that. Yeah, you know, you don't do that. Yeah, you can be competitive, and I understand, but you don't do that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You don't do yeah. it. And the thing about it, it worked. <laughs> It right, worked. right, and that's what make you. That's what make you really look bad. Right, that's what make you really look yeah, bad. It worked. It worked. I'm like, man, you know, but you know, I, yeah, that that. But I don't know if he can lead a team, though. You know, like I said, when MJ retired that that that, that year, it was his team. You yeah, know, yeah. yeah. I mean, they did okay, but and Kawhi had similar personnel. And think about it with Toronto, and he led them boys to the championship. So. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just think he a better score. I agree. I just think he a better yeah, score. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mo most memorable championship. Most yeah. High school championship, your NCAA championship, or your NBA championship? NCAA. NCAA. It ain't even close for me. Even though some people say the Lakers, yeah, that's fine. Well, you understand, man, I barely played against with the Lakers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Even though I contribute, but I barely contribute. You know, they right. say, oh, you contribute, Bill. But, hey, but cause college, that was it, especially because I that was my second senior year. You know, I decided to come back. I could have left the year before and just took my chances, but I red shirted, came back, and I won the national championship, so it was all worth it. And, you know, I got a national championship, so – so that would be my most memorable, even though I won it in high school too, which was big, you know? And like I said, you got choices, but I would take my college championship. Nice, Okay. Nice. What was one thing you learned from the game of basketball? Don't take nothing for granted. You know, you gotta you cherish everything you get in the game, man. Cause you know, it's, it's, none of this is promised to nobody. None of it, you know, when God gives you a gift, you have to take advantage of it. You know, like, like I had God given gifts, you know, God blessed me to be a shooter, long athletic. And so you have to take advantage of that, man. You know, some kids, they get this ability and they don't take advantage of, it. you know, I always tell my kids, man, I say, Hey, I say, God bless you with a, with this gift, man. I say, you got to take advantage of, it. I say, you got to work just as hard as anybody else, regardless how good you is and privileged you is as far as gifts. And, you know, that way you will never get lost in the game. So just, you know, you got to take the game. Don't take the game for granted. That's what I learned. Nice. Last question, Milt, before we let you get up out of here. We know mm -hmm. you won the championship playing overseas in France. Where was your favorite place to play, your favorite place to travel when you were overseas? Man, Israel, uh, man. Israel for me. Man I, man, I played in Israel five years. Man, I'm telling you, boy, Israel. Same with me. <laughs> <laughs> play, That's all I, I can say. Five, I played five and a half years there. <laughs> That's all I can say. Woo! <laughs> I mean, you got the men yeah, Israel, the sea. Everybody speaks English. I mean, it, it's a beautiful country, man. I mean, I played there five years. The only reason I left because they started messing with my money, so it was time to go. I guess I had to, <laughs> that, yeah, I guess they yeah, had to do it. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was the only reason I left. You know, then I went to Paris from there. Paris was nice, but I still, I still like Israel. I say Israel for me. You know, facts. I'm gonna back you all the way up on that one. I'm gonna back you all the way up on that one. If you've been yes. there, you know. <laughs> there you exactly. Go. No, no, we all been yes. there. We all been there. Exactly. Okay.
Okay, well, you know too then. <laughs> OG, man, I appreciate you taking a little bit of time out of your day to come through and bless the podcast, man. Like I said, I, it's my first time really getting a chance to meet you in person, man. You know, I hear about the stories and legacy. Uh, I wasn't really old enough to really watch you play in person on my own, but I always catch highlights, man. And uh, right. just legends from listening to my dad, man. It's a pleasure to have you on. I appreciate you just taking a little bit of time to come through and holler at us, man. Hey, man, it's no problem, man. I, thanks for ca- having me on, man. It's, I'm privileged. It's my privilege to be on y'all show, man. I love it, man. Yes, sir.